Okay, I just finished making the final touches for the uh, 3D model uh, of the tower that I'm creating for this um, game I'm developing to teach German. Um, I spent a lot of time on it, uh, partly because I've had a large learning curve. A lot of the stuff that I've done in Blender here has required me to go out and you know find stuff on the internet, and I don't have any art experience or 3D modeling experience. I had to teach myself basically from the ground up. So uh, I've learned a lot, and um, there's probably a lot of mistakes. Doesn't look as good as it could, but I'm rightly proud of it. So let me just show you exactly kind of what it takes to make a 3D model, like this, a 3D resource for a game. Now I'm going to go into full screen mode here for a second, and we'll see that a, uh, a game, or a, excuse me, a model, uh, the specific one I have developed here, is actually composed of different components or, or objects. We have the, uh, I'll zoom in, we have the external arches right here, we have the left, and we also have the right. Uh, road sign, warning signs, so don't drive your car into the tower. Uh, we have the archway itself, uh, the inner passageway. We have the main body of the tower. Uh, we have the hoist system, which I added just uh, yesterday, in fact. And we have the upper body of the tower, which is composed of windows and the clock face. We have the steeple. Uh, we have the base of the bell tower, the bell tower proper, and the uh, roof on the bell tower. Now, all of these mo uh, components I've put together, sort of uh, like building a model, actually, and uh, this creates a uh, complete 3D resource that I can drop into the game. Now, the other things you see right here are actually used to, uh, when I make a render, when I make a picture of this, uh, we have the spotlight, and actually I was going to go to the top view for a second. We can see this a little bit better. I'm going to go to flat or um, flat view right here. Uh, we have the spotlight. We have a sun to illuminate the tower from behind to give it a little more depth. Um, we have one camera here that I've been using to kind of spot things as I've developed, and then we have the uh, main camera here which I'll be using. Now we'll zoom in right here and we see we have a object right there. Um, this is actually an empty invisible object. I've created this object and put it at the very center of the tower because this is going to be the parent object which as you can see through this long line that goes to the camera right there um, it's a parent for a parent object to a child object. So what I'm going to do is I've made this invisible uh, I made this invisible object, put it in the center, and I'm going to rotate it. And as I rotate it, the camera is going to follow the rotation. I'm going to get a really nice uh, 360 degree uh, animated turnaround or animated render of this uh, of this tower. So. Uh, let me go back into regular uh, mode of looking at, I can't remember there's a special term for it, orthographic or, or something like that, and then the other one is, uh, anyway, perspective mode. So I'm back in perspective mode, and um, now this tower is already is composed of different objects. Now let me get out of full screen mode and go back into regular. I'm going to highlight the main tower uh, component, the main, uh, the body of the tower. Uh, right now I'm in object mode, we see right here. I'm going to go into edit mode, and we see that this object, uh, this tower body, is actually composed of numerous little uh, points or vertices in 3D space. Now, when we run a game, the computer, every, uh, I don't know, like, was it 30, 60, 60 times a second, depending on the frames per second that you have set up, is going to re is going to calculate exactly where these points are in 3D space. 
and, and render the tower according to the position of the player or the camera in the game. Now, this means that if you have a lot and lots of these little vertices, it's going to be a resource hog for your, uh, your graphic processing unit or your uh, CPU. So what we want to do is we want to try to keep these game objects as, uh, well, keep them as simple as possible in terms of vertices, vertex count, vertices count, and, but at the same time trying to create something that looks halfway decent. So um, what we, we do now is, as I go into, I'll pull the render preview up just for a second, is I have a 3D object in the left hand side of the screen right here. On the right hand side I have a essentially a 2D object or a 2D image. How do I take a 2D image and apply it to a 3D object? Well what we do is we uh, simply unwrap the 3D object um, and we take this and then we can see uh, if we there we go we have all of the essentially the same points are mapped onto a 2D image and we take them and apply them to a 3D object. So essentially what we get is something that looks like this as we go into a quick preview mode. So um, I just finished this. I kind of wanted to take a few moments to explain how this object is put together. Um, and then what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a, and do a quick turnaround so we can see how this object looks from all sides.